Let's go. You ready to create this? Let's do this thing. All right. We do always rise and give honor to the Most High, y'all. His Son, Yeshua, the true Messiah, always to all of y'all divine preachers in every place, preaching, teaching, living, y'all's divine word. I was to beloved ministers that labor with me as part of in y'all, whom are not ashamed to call brethren, could disagree to them in their respective places, always to those that are watching in by way of live internet, <clears throat> to the dispersed, to the scattered, to the Jews first, and also to the Gentiles, could disagree to them in their respective places. As we have to say last, never least, to the way of Yah Synagogue. Amen. Proper unto you all in your respective places. Amen. Once again, from TV, internet, radio, wherever our voice can be heard, wherever we can be seen, before we came on, had nothing come on, when we go off, absolutely <coughs> ain't nothing else coming on. They're not teaching Kaddish, living a clean, sanctified life. The people ain't in nothing. And they hadn't heard nothing. <laughs> this is an attempt. To collect the debt. It's always one in the crowd. To collect the debt. Whatever you hypocrite, false pretend, backbite, mumbling, grumbling against will be used <clears throat> in that collection of a debt. These messages are always being recorded for quality assurance. To make sure no side deals get cut with nobody. But everybody got to come in, brother. Ren! Out of the door. Straight. Narrow path. Pick me back up. First Epistle of John, chapter 3. Verse 1. Thank the Lord. Amen. Give me first Epistle of John 2 and 1 first. First John. Those that are watching in epistles mean something. It means they're not scripture. These are writings. These are letters. That's what they call epistles. So this is first epistle of John. <clears throat> this will be chapter 2 at verse 1. Listen. My little children. My little children. These things write I unto you. That you do what? That ye sin not. Other oh, brother, you give me the fifth chapter of the book of uh, Ephesians verse 1. Ephesians 5 and 1, some kind of way we'll come back to 1 John 3 and 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is stuff people don't like to talk about not sinning. People look for excuses to commit sin. There's never an excuse to commit sin. This is the reason why we have information. <clears throat> the reason we got information is that we might know how we ought to walk. Other brother, before you read that, give me First um, Thessalonians chapter 4 at verse 1. The first, uh, first Thessalonians chapter four at verse one. Other brothers still got me. First Epistle John chapter two at verse one. They still hold me. First Epistle John chapter three verse one and Ephesians chapter five verse one. That's what we get teleprompt for. Listen to the book. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, that you do what and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk. So you receive information, right? We receive information. He said, as you have received of us how you ought to walk. Which would be ought, it would mean what, brother? Expected. You were expected or obligated to walk. So that you can do what? And to please God. And to please God. So you would abound more and more. Which means you become more fruitful. That's the whole purpose. When we look at our whole operation, we are similar to a seed being sown. And the hope, and the, and the hope of a person that is a husbandman, which would be a farmer, somebody that will plant seed, would be that he can yield fruit from the seed. Well, now we look at we're seed. So the whole purpose of us being planted is that he can yield fruit from us, right? Amen. He said, my father is the husband, right? I'm the true vine. The thing now we sit down to consider now is now the apostles come along and told us, as we have received them, how you ought to walk. So we look at the word, we look at two illustrations we find from the word. St. <clears throat> John chapter 7 and verse 37. Other brother, get me St. John chapter 3. I needed three readers today, didn't I? Get me St. John chapter 3. Let's see if about verse 20 is what I want. Listen to the book. In the last day, that great day of the feast. Listen to what Jesus did, which we call Yeshua. So for those watching, you hear the terminology Yeshua. Yeshua would be 
his rooted name. Jesus will be a transliterated version of his name, right? We use it interchangeably because that's what we were taught first, right? Jesus, translated. Listen. Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Listen. He that believeth on me, as the what? Scripture hath said, Listen what's going to happen. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So now we start to look at the word being in a liquid form. So when you plant a seed, there are two things you need. Water and sunlight. So when Paul told us, as we have received of him, as you have received of us, as a matter of fact he said, which will be plural, how you ought to walk as you expect it, so you would abound, become more fruitful, more productive. In order to do that, two things you got to have in order to grow. You got to have water and you got to have light. Right? So in the third chapter of the book of, uh, he said, out of his bitter shall flow rivers of living water. Listen to what he said. But this spake he of the Spirit. So this spake he concerning the Word. Right? The Spirit. Are we right? Are we all, y'all all right? He said, but this spake he of the Spirit. So the Spirit, which is the Word, which took on life form in a man, he talked about this Spirit producing water. This is why we come along and hear the Word. A lot of times people don't understand their proper role. This is why a lot of time it hinders people in their transformation of becoming the sons of God. The sons of God would be literally light. Y'all got me? <clears throat> when the Bible said there came a day that the sons of God came before God, they were light. When Paul told us and how we know that because of Paul's statement in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 12. He said, what I do that I will do that I might cut off occasion from them that desire the way in their glory they might be found even as we. For such are what, brother? False apostle, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the what? The apostles of, it'll say Christ, but for us we would say Mashiach. He said, and no marvel, which would mean not to be amazed, but Satan himself was transformed into a what? An angel of light. Y'all got me? So these are the two manifestations what we'll look at with the spirit or the word. You got to have water and you got to have light in order to become productive. Back at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 at verse 1. I told him to give me the third chapter of the book of St. John. Look down. What verse I wanted? St. John chapter 3. I said 20. Is it 24, 33? What I want? Should I tell her whatsoever make manifest his light? Is in the third chapter of the book of St. John. I got readers up that they need to be working. I said St. John the third chapter. What verse I want? Don't worry about it. It'll come back then. Pick me up if you would at first. What verse? Is that verse 19? Don't worry about it. Pick me up at the, uh, well, matter of fact, make it verse 18. Listen to what he said. I can use that. St. John 3 and 18. Listen. He that believeth on him Listen. is not condemned. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Listen. But he that believeth not is condemned what? Already. Listen why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Listen. And this is the condemnation. And see, that's important for you to listen to what he just told you because he hath not believed in the what was it? Only begotten Son of God. The only begotten Son of God. That was important for you to believe that. Just in that little stipulation, it was a stipulation, man. He said the only begotten. There's no reason you believe that anybody else was begotten of God to become his son but him. Adam was called a son of God simply because he had no father. Adam was not begotten. Adam was not begotten. Adam was called the son of God because he had no earthly father. He was a similitude to Yeshua. Yeshua had no earthly father. He was given a father. His connection to David was how, brethren? It was by his mother. His mother was from Judah, which would still tie him back into David. Are y'all gotten? Amen. You didn't have to believe in the, you didn't have to believe in the name of Adam. You had to believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen. The purpose of this you need to know that in the book of Hebrews, the first chapter, he clearly told you it was an inherited name. Somebody that was going to come into possession of. Y'all got it? Amen. This is what he told us in the book of Revelation, chapter one. One and seven. Whatever reason it is, y'all need to know this. See, people read things, but they don't really sit down and they pay attention. In the third chapter of the book of Ephesians, Paul told us, he told the church at Ephesus, well, the synagogue at Ephesus, the congregation at Ephesus, that whereby when you read, brethren, you may have, what was it? Now, where you getting that from? I put some, it was whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge concerning the mystery, 
Mystery, again, will be a hidden truth. Listen, this is Revelation chapter 1 at verse 7. Listen. Behold, behold, he coming with cloud. He coming with cloud, and what happened? And every eye. That would make sense for us. Why, brother? He was coming with cloud. Because he left in the cloud. The Bible took, clearly told you that the angels asked him, said, Why stand ye gazing into the heaven? That same Yeshua that was taken away is going to come back in like what? So it only made sense he was going to come back with a cloud. Listen. And every eye shall see him. And what happened, son? And they also which pierced him. That's going to make sense for what reason, brother? They shall look on him whom they have pierced. Which means that hadn't really been fulfilled in heaven. Mm. Everybody didn't see him. Were you there? Revelation just told you that he coming with cloud. And every eye shall see him. That's what the prophecy was about Zechariah. They shall look on him whom they have pierced. Notice John picked that up. John could have just said he coming with cloud. Or John could have just said he coming back like he said he was. It was important that you had to believe as the scripture have said. When you believe as the scripture said, now you begin to produce one of the things he told you you need in order to grow. Water. Y'all got me? Listen. And all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. And why are we going to look at that? Hmm? All kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Huh? I'm going to stain all my garments. Exactly. The Bible says it's going to mourn as one mourn for their only son. You know how a person cry when it's their only child? How would a mother cry if it's her only child that died? That's how hard they're going to be crying when they come back here. They're going to look on him whom they have pierced. Now that, they're going to be weeping like one mourn for his only son. That's, you know how ecstatic a woman is about her child? She loses her baby. Her only son? Her only child? How hard do you think you'd be crying you lost Jeremiah that was your only child? So he said when they come back, guess what? They're going to they gonna be well. Listen. Even so, amen. He said, John said, so be it. John didn't even say pray for him. Amen means so be it. When we read it, everybody say amen. You said so be it. Listen. I am Alpha and Omega. The what? Beginning and the ending. Who are you, son? Said the Lord. Said the who? The Lord. Said the who? The Lord. Tell him what, what are you? Which is. And what else? And which was. And what else? And which is to come. Tell them who you are, son. The Almighty. Why is that important for a brother? Take us back to the Father. Add the 17th chapter of the book of Genesis. Genesis 17 and 1. Listen, we'll cover, listen, I can lay and talk and come back and open the book up and we'll cover more ground. They're going to cover the whole year. They'll get absolute no. They're still trying to figure out Jesus well. Do you know how many tears went down here right side of his face? <laughs> Tell him you don't either. Because it ain't in the book. Where did That's you get right. it from? Amen. See, what we teach and preach gotta be, it gotta come from the book. Otherwise, ain't no salvation. Can't come along with speculation. Speculation won't say it. We had to believe that the scripture said. Right? That's in he coming with cloud, and every eye shall see him. It makes no ask him why. That's because he coming back. No, it's because the scripture said it. So you just can't believe he's coming back because he's coming back. You got to believe it as the scripture have said. This is how you start to produce fruit. Because now you start to take on water. The next thing you're going to find out, you're going to take on life. Listen. This is the 17th chapter of the book of um, Genesis at verse 1. Listen. And when Abram was 90, 90 years old and 9. What happened, son? The Lord appeared to Abram. The who? The Lord appeared to Abram. Who appeared unto Abram? The Lord. The Lord. What happened? Appeared to Abram and said unto him. I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. That's why I was important, the only begotten. Adam didn't have that name. Adam did not have the name as El Shaddai. That would be the Almighty God. He could not take that on. Y'all got me? Amen. But yet he came on and told you he was Alpha. That's the beginning and the ending. I'm the first and the last. It ought to be first. That means nobody could have been before you. That's right. If I'm the lad, that means nobody's going to be after me. Yet the book told him he's coming with cloud and every uh -huh. shall see him. And all kindreds of the earth going to even well, even so, because of him. Then it told you who he was. Saith the Lord Almighty. And amazingly, when he appeared to Abraham, he just told him that he said the, when he was 99 years old, the Bible said the Lord appeared unto him. And he said that I'm El Shaddai. Walk before me and beat out. What was it, brother? Blameless. Be blameless. That's how you make perfect. When people hear perfect a lot of times, that's what makes them falter. 
All you have to do is say, be blameless. Be blameless. People don't believe you can do it, but look at 1 Timothy 3 and 1. You can't be perfect. The book told him to be blameless. Get 1 Timothy 3 and 1. Listen. 1 Timothy 3 and 1. Today. Amen. Listen. This is a true saying. If a man do what? Desire the office of a bishop. What does he desire, son? A good work. Tell him what a bishop got to be. A bishop then must be blameless. He's going to be Father Abraham. A bishop then must be what? Blameless. What else, son? The husband of one wife. What else? Vigilant. Sober. Of good behavior. Listen. Given to hospitality. You know why we look at Abraham? In the nineteenth chapter of the book of um, in the nineteenth chapter of the book of um, Genesis, two men came to Abraham. Abraham had had Sarah hurry up and kill a kid and dress it. He was given a hospitality. Amen. Oh, there's an overseer. Y'all all right? Amen. Got to be an overseer. He, the first thing he let a man know, you want to desire that offer, he got to be blamed. You go watch every one of these people they sell for a bishop, they blame for. Yet yeah, everybody want to take on and want to claim the name of God. You don't claim it. Live it like you told you to do. Be blameless. It ain't hard. Just do what the man told you to do. The reason Abraham was blaming it because God gave him statute, commandment, judgment. This was light. At the third chapter of the book of St. John. St. John 3. Give me a verse 19. St. John 3 and 19. This is what it said. And this is the condemnation. And this is the what? Condemnation. This is where your condemnation come in at. Tell them what happened, son. That light is coming to the world. I told you what the word is. You're going to find two forms. The spirit is going to be light and it's going to be water. This is what it takes in order for you to grow. What happened with a lot of you guys? You wind up rejecting one or the other or both. This is what happened. Why? If you don't have the spirit and y'all been sitting here on the word, it's simply because you've been rejecting it. This is your condemnation. He said light is coming to the world. Tell them what men love, son. And men love darkness. Rather than what? Light. Tell them why. Because their deeds were evil. This is what he said. For everyone that doeth evil. How much they love God? Hateth the light. I want you to pray for me, Pastor. I'm cheating on my wife. And I know I love the Lord and I want to be saved. I don't know what's wrong. What, did, what happened to Brandon? For everyone that doeth evil. Tell them what they do. Hateth the light. I can tell y'all what y'all problem is. I tell y'all a lot of time I come here, I tell y'all it'd be a snap. I had to come in laughing and keep from crying. I teach a word that can save a man or woman they take it. It's just been like a man or woman take what I'm teaching. You can be saved. Amen. It don't take no 50 years to get it either. Amen. But the truth being told, what the average of y'all got, y'all hate the light. This is what else they do. Tell them what else they do. Neither cometh to the light. Don't make sense. I be want to come and talk to you, but I know you be busy. I don't be want to bother you. I know it. That's always a good excuse. Now you know what they're going to do. They're going to flood me out tonight. They're going to wait. It be snowing out there, packed up, just to try to prove they don't hate the light. Don't try to heal that. Don't let that start just stop you. What's in your heart is in your heart. This, this is what the book tells you. Y'all, let me tell you something. The average person already know what they're doing. Everybody know what they're doing. So what you try to do, you figure if you stay away, you hid. You're not hidden, though. At the sad part, you're not hidden. The only reason you stay away because you hate the light. Let me show you something. At the third chapter of the book of Genesis. Hold on. Before you give me the third chapter of the book of Genesis, um, hold me that and jump over and get me first epistle of John chapter 1 and verse 1. So he got me Genesis chapter 3. Give me about verse 4. Other brother going to get me first epistle of John chapter 1 and verse 1 first. Y'all good? Amen. All right, let's see what happened. Listen. That which was from the beginning. That which was from the beginning. Tell him what happened, son. Which we have heard. Which we have what? Heard. And what else with your hands? Which we have seen with our eyes. Which we see with our eyes. And what else did you do, son? Which we have looked upon. And what else did we do? And our hands have handled of the word of life. So they talking about you. Sure, one of the time that people put their hands and their eyes on God. He said, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which our eyes have seen and our hands have handled. Tell us what happened, son. For the life was manifest. For the life. That's L-I-F-E. Amen. Listen, was manifest. Listen. And we have seen it. And we've seen it. 
Come and, on. And bear witness. And we bear witness. And shew unto you that eternal life. Listen. Which was with the Father. Which was with the Father. And was manifested unto us. Listen. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you. Come on, son. That he also may have fellowship with us. Listen what happened. And truly our fellowship is with the Father. Listen. And with his Son, Jesus Christ. Talk to me. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Talk to us, son. This then is the message. I, that's what I've been wondering. Why is John giving me all this talk about this? From the beginning, started with, and then was, and is. He said, well, basically, let me tell you this, son. This is what I've been trying to tell you. Talk to me, John. Which we have heard of him. Which we heard of him. And declare unto you. Tell him what it is, son. That God is light. Not white. I told y'all the light manifests in two, the spirit going to manifest in two forms. It's going to be light and it's going to be water. That's what you need in order to properly grow anything. Anybody know about farming should know that. Amen. So now y'all ask me why you don't have it, why you're not more productive or more abundant. Let's look at what you're taking in. Are you getting enough sunlight? That's amazing. They got pills or they'll regulate people. They say, you know what you need to do? You need to go and sit out in the sun for 30 minutes a day. Or they'll recommend vitamin D pill for people that don't take enough sunlight because there are things that become hazardous to you when you don't. If you don't take enough water, there are things that happen. You know that. Naturally, there are things that happen to you. Then why people don't understand the, the divine nature? You have a divine nature. Everything with nature, you have a spiritual side to it. Just like we saw with the sun. We knew him as the son of who? We knew him as the son of David. That's a man. Which means he had all the criteria and all the characteristics to tie him into son of David. Right? He had to have a lineage. Right? Had to have a bloodline. He had to be in the city. He had to be associated with the tribe. Son of David couldn't be with Ephraim. Son of David couldn't be in Zebulon. Son of David couldn't be in uh, Manasseh. Son of David had to show characteristic and the bloodline and the family behavior of David. Gonna put you in Judah. You're gonna dwell in the city where Jews are gonna dwell at. Son of David. Son of God got behaving characteristic. Here are the two my father do, and I work. He showed all the characteristics and manifestation of being the Son of God. Y'all got it? Now you're starting to look at what is it that you're trying to profess? Who are you trying to become? Son of man, or y'all trying to become son of God? Well, we would say sons of God. We can't say singular, we gotta say plural. You can't be individual son of God. There can only be one begotten of God. But now you become joint heirs, which means now you got to have water. You got to have sunlight, which means now you got to come back in their stipulation and guideline for your behavior. Amen. Now, Paul told us, furthermore, brethren, as you have received of us, how you, what was it? So that you would do what? The, fa- the son told her that the father loved the son. And he showed him all things that he himself does. And he's going to show him greater things than this that you might marvel. So now you're starting to look at what you begin to profess or confess is different than what you begin to actually show in your behavior. So how serious are you about becoming the sons of God? Because now when you hear what it takes in the stipulation, then you ought to be looking at add here. When you add here to something, you stick or hold fast to. Right? A lot of y'all quick to get away and you hard to come to. I can help y'all out. Listen. And in him is no darkness at all. Now, according to what we read in St. John chapter 3 and verse 19, by he that does evil, what does he do now? Hate the light, neither does what? Why? Because if these will be, what was it? They're going to be reproved. See, when you come to God, what light do light or show something? You put your clothes on in the dark. In your mind, you look like, I know I'm good. And you go to you say, oh, goodness, this thing going backwards. Because light showed you that. Now, when you don't care, you don't turn the light. You just leave like it is. Because you know why? I don't want to know. I like thinking that it's right, even though light will manifest to show me it's wrong. That's how a lot of y'all doing here. You don't want to come and ruin stuff by me you're going to do. You ain't going to come ask me because you already know it's wrong. And you don't come see me, you know you're going to be shot down. You say, that's why I ain't come. You just like the king of Judah. You ain't going to come ask me because you already know I ain't going to tell you nothing good. I ain't going to tell you nothing good because you're always doing nothing wrong. Why is he going to say every time a man of God don't tell me nothing good? Because you're always doing stuff you already know abstract, that's crazy, that's already outside the guideline, and you don't want to be told. You get dressed in the dark. You don't even want to turn the light on even before you leave it. Just check it. It's better that way. 
I just rather find out later when I hit society and people look at me and I find myself to be a complete idiot. Something wrong with your mindset. At the third chapter of the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. Jump down about verse 5. Matter of fact, give me 3 and 2. 3 and 2. Genesis 3 and 2. Listen. And the woman said unto the serpent. What is she saying? We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. What happened, son? But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. What happened? God have said. Did somebody seemed like I heard somebody talking one time. God have said. I had read this book one time. We're talking about what fruits to stay away from. And you don't want to gain weight. God have said. God has said. Ye shall not eat of it. Oh, what else, son? Neither shall you touch it. What happened? Lest ye die. At verse 6. Listen. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Yes. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Come on. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Come on. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And what happened? Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. Makes sense. Adam and his wife hid themselves. What did they do? They hid themselves well? Amongst the trees of the garden. Because that would have been shade. They would have went in the dark. They would have hid themselves amongst the trees because trees are going to give shade. You just, read, you just read for yourself that God is light. Now what you going to do when God comes? You've been told. You know what you shouldn't do. God comes. I'm sure you I, I, I ain't want to bother you. I know you be busy and you got to try to get them stars and everything, but I was coming. That's how we knew they were black. Everybody got an excuse. Listen what happened. And the Lord God called unto Adam. And what happened? Said unto him, where art thou? And what happened? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. Yeah. And I was afraid. And what happened? Because I was naked and I hid myself. Because he already knew he had done wrong. It made sense to go see God. He light. I just committed a dog act. What I want to go see him for? What, what God? He don't do it. Run me down. Tell me how dumb and how stupid I am. Make me feel bad. See, people don't want to accept responsibility. That hurts us a lot of times, especially for people of color. Responsibility really hurt us. I used to have that old um, uh, look for an excuse, and I thank God he never let me use it. Unlike a lot of y'all, y'all look for a reason to quit, look for a reason to fail. You use people. You use anything you can to try to vindicate or justify yourself and not being where you at other than just looking at yourself and taking responsibility. And look at what's required. What's required of me don't change because of other people of or other people guidelines or stipulations. I already got guidelines. They're going to determine why I spend the time. It's the word. At the end of the day, how I feel don't determine my servitude toward God. I'm going to go and I'm going to do while I'm able because a day going to come. I might not be able to. So I want to put all I can in with God, what God know for himself. If it was any way he could, he would. Y'all got me? I could have called on a safety alert and said, well, let's just be wise and let's be careful and let's not go. I, was, I didn't want nothing to happen to the member. I know people can't bear what I can bear. Some have you tell some, it's going to be me and God's fault. It best you stay at home. It best I go. I can afford to lose it. I told my car, my truck up, I was good. I ain't have no problem. I wasn't going to cuss God why I had thou forsaken me. I was good. I knew my obligation didn't change. I was watching people getting ready to go home today, tell me they got to go. They closed down early. I said, I got to go to work. They said, what kind of job you got? I said, I'm a pastor. I said, my job don't stop. Rain, unlike, I said, unlike y'all, I can't clock out. I can't make no excuses. I had to slide around. Listen, I was looking for the worst, and I was expecting the best out of God. I had to get him. Y'all hear me? Amen. I'm telling you, listen, I watch out. If, any, if you lose a job, if you lose a friend, if you, get, if you lose $5, anything, I can already sit on y'all faith. You ain't finna serve God right. It's showing y'all faith when y'all going through stuff. Y'all wear so much of the world, and the devil already know you defeated before you get started. Y'all already wear the feet on you. You don't never show no victory. You ain't never victorious. If you got a certain amount of money, you be victor- victorious with God. That's sad. That's man-made. It got to be something in your heart. Amen. It got to be something in your heart that just make you still keep pressing. I got all the problems a man or woman can ask for. But you know, at the end of the day, I don't, do I wear it on my face? I don't carry not one time, do I? 
I don't come in and make no excuse. At the end of the day, I got to be saved. Y'all hear me? The Amen. man told me it's impossible. Fence got to come. Amen. I don't ask God not give him, Lord, if you will. Lord, you see trouble down the road, move it out of the way before I get there. I ain't got time to ask God to move nothing. He already know the road before I get to it. He already know the road before I get to it. I just get up and go, and I give God, and I give God praise and give God thanks in the morning before I get up. That's already been spoken for. Whatever's going to come, just let me stand. And if nothing don't come, I had a mind to be ready for whatever came. Y'all hear, if something came, I had a mind to be ready. So either way it go, you got to have the Bible even tell us, you're supposed to have a readiness to avenge all disobedience. Y'all ain't got it. Y'all got a mind to go and be disobedient. That's a difference. Y'all looking at, if you really sat down and look at how simple it is actually for us to be saved, the only thing that him, the man of one, for really being saved, why it takes so long, is you. It's you. Your individual stuff that you got hang-ups with and the things you let keep you back, it's you. Truth being told, it's you. You got too many restrictions. You got too many. The stuff y'all got struggles on ain't even a struggle. You'll make things bigger than what they are. That thing got to be in your heart, man. It's just got to be in your heart. At the end of the day, okay, there's nowhere around I'm going to die. I got past that. That was my biggest fight. Maybe death, I said, well, maybe death was for certain people. Maybe everybody ain't going to die. We know that there are some that won't see death until he come back. But the truth being told, you had to start counting. I had to start realizing I, I, I put so much effort in and wanting the expectation of I want to be in that number that don't die before you come back. But I can spend so much time trying not to worry about trying to fight to keep from dying that I have never started living for God. Because in order to really live for God, the truth be told, there's a lot of things you can't do. If you want to keep living in this world, there's a lot of things you're going to have to sell yourself over to. When you start talking about serving what God tells you to do, like he told her, listen, he tried to prepare before it happened. He said, the time come that whoever kill you going to support that do God's service. That puts you in a hole. You can try to say, let me try, try to love everybody. Let me try to, try to just talk good to everybody. Don't say nothing bad about nobody. You ain't going to be no child of God. I'm going to have to say something bad about them. You sure even said something bad about people. How am I going to come along and ain't going to do it? So he told me a servant not greater than him. Master, neither is he that sent greater than him that sent him. Now, how am I going to be greater than him? So the whole 23rd chapter of the book of Matthew, we call these four vipers. Hypocrite. You know what I'm saying? I just, I, I just don't like that word. I just don't think saints ought to say stuff like that. Call people snakes and call people jackals. Do something in my spirit. You start saying that's the hypocrisy. The average of the people, when people come to you with that, it's simply because they know what state they're in and they don't want to be condemned. I told a man was saying something to me today, good Christian. I said something to my husband. He said, I don't want to throw no stone. Stone come right. I said, too many senses. What are you talking about throwing stone? That's a fact. But see, that's how people think. This is, their, this is how they get closer to God. Don't say nothing and don't speak nothing. I'll say you're going to be better than God. It's just what I'm a, I said, sit. You just spoke that thing. In. I spoke Simon Gamal. Because it was him before I said it. People say he made people fool. I said, man, who would show me the doubt? I'm broke. Oh, you just spoke it. See that? You got to watch what comes. Niggas are fat. If I can speak broke, you don't think I'd say a millionaire? Ain't nothing happen. God, these folks program your mind. People, listen. This is why he said, this is why they don't come to the light. Because they come to the light, their deeds going to be reproved. This is the same reason why Adam and Eve didn't come to God when he called a God in light. And in him and no darkness at all. You already know what they said before you come. So a lot of times y'all do certain things. Y'all think if you stay away from me or you stay out of sight, you think you're safe. You're not safe. That's y'all problem. At the same time, you realize you're missing light. You're missing one or two things you need in order for you to become productive. You're missing either the light or you're missing the water. And some you ain't getting either or. So at that point, you're just a dried out prune. Y'all all right? Amen. Come on over to the first epistle of John chapter 2. Just trying to help y'all out a little bit. This information we need. Think about it. Eventually you're going to leave him. It could be a snowstorm. It could be a, a rainy day. It could, be, it could be a sunny day. It could be a windstorm. It could be a hurricane. It could be a tornado. It could be, it could be a fire. It could be anything to take you out of him. Man, you look on the news, many people getting gunned down, killed, 
A house exploded the other day. Somebody said it smelled the gas leak. They went down to the rescue workers. Everybody went there to check it out. Fire. House just blowed up. Listen, the smell of the ring. Bone cut. Listen, rescue worker, 15 people hurt. They said, we just went to check it out. I said, look at God. Look at God. People just said they smell gas. Another man trying to cross a train track with a truck. I don't know why they keep saying a truck driver. Man, they had a pickup truck and a little train on the back of it. Got stuck on the track. Derailed the train. 20-some people injured. Got to go to the hospital. Nobody was expecting that. But look at God. Amen. There's too many different ways God can come get you. They got other folk kidnapped. Eight killed in the check. In the, in the check. All these different places, these folk come and get these people. Y'all sit up there thinking you're safe. You're not safe. Y'all sitting here to worry. It's most dangerous to you. That the truth being told, we know it's imminent. It's inevitable. There's no way we're going to escape death. We all got to see it to get out of him. Now, the only thing you can do is escape damnation. The mindset y'all got to have when y'all come here, you got to be more ready here than to get a sacrifice of fools. Because y'all keep coming, that don't equate to salvation. What's equivalent to that is that you got to use application. This is something you guys missed. You had never even started applying. And y'all looking for something that you can't possibly get because you ain't got nothing. First of all, the word had to fall on the good ground. This is a problem. Because the average of you guys had never cleaned up nothing. You still mean, grouchy, hypocrite, you ain't obeying, you bad wife, you're riding husband. Kids riding. Everybody just riding. They're like, oh, like um, what's her name? Miss Silly tried to tell hop on them. She said, Y'all was some riding kids. Y'all was some rotten kids. Really? Hold on, shut up. You were rotten. That's rotten. Now, this is a problem why you have no productivity. Now, when the word comes, it's more better to fall on good ground. That's something else you need. You got to check the soil level. So the word had to first come to convict you. That's in the book of Jeremiah, who remember what he told him to do? Break up your fallow ground, your until ground. You can't just go and throw seed on no hard ground. This is one problem I got. Some of y'all still hard-hearted. You still stiff-necked, which means the word has never penetrated. The water comes to soften the soil. See, everything the word is sent to do, it doesn't. It's just you got to have an understanding. When this word is going out and it's being sown, now you got to soften your heart so the word can get in. On the day of Pentecost, Acts 2.37. Make it 2.36. I love this word. Man, it's the plan of salvation. People just too dumb to get it. You saying you rustling and tussling. When y'all hear the word, you go right out here and you disobedient. What are you expecting? What's your expectation from God? Because God got expectation from you. Some jobs you'll go to, they'll ask you, they'll tell you what they're requiring and what they're expecting. They want to know, what's your expectation of this job? What are you looking to do here? And you can get a nine to five, they don't no talking. Just tell you to come to work and this is what we got and this is what you're doing. A good job saying they want to know, what's your expectation from us? Surely you're expecting something from us other than just getting paid, don't you? You're expecting some growth, right? You're expecting some investment. You're expecting something long-term, right? Well, that's what God's looking for. He's looking for something long-term. He's had short relationships, and none of them worked out. He had quickies. We just grab people and get them right quick, and it wind up being the biggest mess you ever had. So God's looking for long-term. What is, what's your expectation from God? Everything you don't expect nothing. You just think if you come, like people said, baby, just keep coming. Something happen. What will happen? You're going to weigh yourself out. You're going to burn a lot of gas. You're going to go to hell later. I don't tell people that. I would never tell any of you guys to just keep coming. Makes absolutely no sense. First of all, y'all need to do, you got to soften your heart. This is Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Listen. Therefore. Let all the who? House of Israel. Know what? Assuredly. That God. Hath made that same Jesus. Whom ye have what? Crucified. Both what? Lord and Christ. Tell them what happened, son. Now when they heard this. What happened to them? They were pricked in their heart. That's what Jeremiah told us to do. Break up that fallow ground. Your until ground. See, in order to get them to a point to where. Finish reading this. Acts 237. This 238. What happened? And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles. Men and what? Brethren. What shall we do? Then Peter said. Unto them, repent and, and be, be baptized. How many? Every one of you. In the what? Name of Jesus Christ. For the what? Remission of sin. And you shall do what? Receive the gift of the Ruach HaKadosh. For those that are watching, he did not mess up the Ruach HaKadosh is the word we use for what they have for Holy Ghost. Holy will take them back over to an Indian deity, the Hindu deity. We don't use that word. We use Ruach HaKadosh. That's the spirit of separation. 
Kodesh means to separate, consecrate. Listen, Ruach would be the spirit. Come on. For the promise is unto you. And to what? Your children. And to who else? All that are afar off. Even as many? As the Lord our God shall call. And what happened? And with many other words. Did Peter do what? Did he testify? And what else did he do? Exhort. He E-X-H-O-R-T warned. Saying. Save yourselves. Listen. From this untoward. From this backward general. This same thing I tell y'all. Save yourself from other members. Save yourself from your family. Save yourself from your job. Save yourself from these other situations. Then they that did what? Then they that gladly received his word. Were what? Baptized. This is what happened. And the same day they were added unto them. About 3,000 souls. So after they had the ground broken up, that's when they said they were pricked in their heart. Right? So when you look at planting, you got you to gotta prick. You got to wind up tearing into the ground. The sow seed. You don't just sow seed on top of ground. You got to till it. You got to pull it up. And that's what he looked at. In order for them to become productive, he had to prick their heart. I could not prick your heart. You know what y'all do? You fight and you harden up. That's why you're not saved. Now y'all, you know what y'all to come at and do? Apologize to me. I don't want to apologize for being hard headed. I want to apologize for having an attitude. Don't apologize to me. That's why you ain't saved. That ain't your problem. Your problem is you ain't got the you ain't got the mindset. The teacher should invoke something. When they saw their downfall, when they saw where they were wrong at, they came back to take correction. Whom the Lord loveth, he done what was it? Chasing, encourage every son whom he receiveth. That's why he said, therefore, let all the house of Israel. If you was a Gentile, was he talking to you? I wasn't even talking to you. What you had said, I wouldn't even talk to you. Let all the house of Israel know surely that God had made that same Jesus whom you crucified, made him Lord and the Messiah. When they heard this, that's how you had to do it. It's got to go on good ground. He told y'all in the 13th chapter of the book of Matthew. It's got to be on good ground. He told them some fell by the wayside. Some fell among thorns. And you know what happened? They choked the word. And some of y'all, y'all hear it. Then you go right back around people that's unproductive. What you think they're going to do? Choke the word. I'm going to sit down and try to explain to some no good writing family member or some writing friends sell them about what I'm doing and what I'm in. What am I sp- That's beautiful. That's right now. That's the word of God. Can't fight that. If they had that mindset, they'd be here too. What do you think some people are going to tell me that going contrary to what the teachers say? Everything they hear is going to be wrong. They're going to come along and condemn what they're doing. Because it's going to affect other people. And people, that's what hinders a lot of y'all. And the people drag y'all right down to hell with them because you worry about where they're going. You need to consider about yourself. Listen, the book has clearly told you not one of you can redeem your brother. At best, you can save yourself. Peter would have never told him, save your kids, save your wife. He said, save yourself. I mean, listen, it's every man for himself. Huh? Amen. Listen, you know where he got that from? Save yourself? When Jonah when he was on the ship. So every man call on their God. Save yourself. Every man call on your God. At this point, we get ready. We get ready to capsize. We get ready to go down. It's a bad storm. So at this point, save yourself. Y'all don't have that mindset. You still think you got light and you ain't saved. I cannot understand for life. Me, I've never seen so many people comfortable not being saved. It don't even bother you. So what do you think you're going? It's this like predetermined place. God got people that. Well, you were there. Oh, Tony Smith, your pastor. If anything, you ought to go to hell before anybody else. Any reward. Y'all were taught this. Any reward. Who it go to first? Any damnation. Any destruction. At the second chapter of the book of Romans. Make sure the people watching got it. A lot of people quick to claim Jew. You, that's what I am too. I'm a Jew too. I hope you know the Jew the first one to go to hell. Isn't that right? Salvation to the Jew first. Damnation to the Jew first. Isn't that right? So I take it with, listen, you got to take the law with all validity. Like Moses told her, a man that does these things, you got to live by it. I can't just go along and live with the blessing God. God said, he'll do. God told me. God, God told me he'll cut me off too. God told me he'll catch me in a lake of fire. I got to take all of it. That's what keep me adamant about serving God. Now the big guy to pay if it was for y'all. It's like David, my foot it well not slip when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Now I realize you don't watch these people long enough. These people don't win for long. It looks good for a while. Man, be so quick. God come and get these people. And one time they're like, man, you know, it looks like they went along to God get them. Then you say, you know what? It wasn't worth it. It's then you find out. Cause nobody knows when God gonna capsize them. Everybody went and look like man. You look at it, you say, man, I'm for me going a long time. Man, then God come get them. You say, 
Man, that was short. That wasn't long as it looked. When God come get you, it ain't never long enough. Whatever you did, it wasn't long enough. When God come to get you and cut you, mm, whatever you're doing, it ain't going to last that long. All these, look at Whitney Houston. I remember when she won more Grammy than anybody ever won. Man, she, she walked the Grammys, didn't she? I remember that time I went to see what they said. You heard how many Grammys she won? Now she did. How long it look like she rang? Like she rang about a day or two, didn't it? Man, no, you can't even hardly remember. Then you think about when you sit at the top of your game, at the pinnacle of your game. Man, I had people come in at the pinnacle of this stuff. Then when God come take these people down and remove them or kill them, what you say? Man, there wasn't no time at all. It ain't worth it. It look good when you're doing it. When you're doing it, look like, man, I could be doing it forever. You're an idiot. Mm. Only an idiot. You know, that's just the center of mind. Y'all to do this. Y'all to run and explode and do something quick and you don't realize that stuff going to be over so fast. Before you know it, you're going to be sitting down in judgment. It look good when you're running. When you're doing it, it's good. But God come get you, you'll be like, that was no time at all. Now you got to get restitution? Mm -mm. I'm good. I can wait. They ain't got nothing they can offer me to pull me away from there. One time, if they probably came and got me early when I first came, I probably would have shaped a little bit rattle. But I wasn't going nowhere. I was too afraid of dying. That man put the fear in me and let me know, son, you're going to have to meet me. I'm one person you don't want to meet. I didn't know how, I knew it wasn't going to be good for me. I just didn't know how I was going to meet him. But I knew it wasn't going to be good for Tony. Tony knew I had to get him. Y'all hear me? I had an opportunity. I had an offer to go ahead and break and leave him. Thank God I stayed steady. Stay steady to court. Y'all hear me? It Amen. paid off for me now. Amen. I look at the people that offered one offered me to try to help me out. He dead now. I said, look, a dead man was talking to me. God let me know. Son, you could have just jumped yourself. I'm in the fell. I told you, he pulled up and told me. He said, you know you good with me. He said, ain't nothing. He said, I'll give you what you want. What you I look. Man, I can get that thing. I can get back on my feet. Catch up, get me a little something stacked up again. I said, I could do that thing. I told myself. I said, no, nah. I said, that's all right. He said, all right, nigga rolled off slow, too. Let me know, just rolled off slow. He ain't go fast, either. Nigga, dead. Dead man would talk. God, let me say, son, you were talking to a dead man. They told me that fella died. I said, look, a dead man will offer me some. He said, man, get on your feet, man. Look, didn't want to see. He was offered, didn't want to see me like that. I was dead broke. Couldn't even pay for a patch for my tie. Five dollars. I was like, man, I get this dope. I flip this dope to get me straight. Get this done, pay him back, be straight, get me some money, I'm stacked up a little bit. Then I could be good. Boy, God showed no good. I'd have touched that door, I'd have flipped another flip. Then another flip. You know how I've been flipped over somewhere in prison. Or flipped over somewhere in a grave. Boy, God showed no be good to me. You know what? The man offered to look to help me out, he did. All I think, just like God had how the angel told Beta, had you continued coming, son, I'd have surely killed you. I'll surely kill you. So a lot of times y'all look at this stuff, your family and different people that help you out and what people do. These people not helping you when you when they're trying to pull you off the path. Quit looking at these folks when they love hard. These people don't mean you no good. They don't mean you no good. My family tell me all the time, you know, we're gonna have something every time. I've been doing this for done seven, eight years, and they still had a nerve to have something on Saturday. You can't come. They said, don't you have an assistant? Can't he carry? I said, it's my job. I said, what y'all doing on Sunday? It, people can't make it on Sunday. <laughs> that's how it is. That's how it is. And that's how we keep it. Every year. Every year going to stay the same way. Every time they come back, it's going to be the same thing. Amen. I'm just like Nehemiah talk. I'm doing a great work. I can't come down. Why should the work cease? Why does I leave it to come down to you? And they keep sending messages back. You know what I do? I sit back at the same mount. I'm doing a great work so that I could not come down. I ain't coming off no wall to come to see them. Y'all be loving these sinners. I already know my family, everybody life a vapor smoke. Smell the sinner. Man ain't got time to no sinner try to convince me and hold your peace, devil. <laughs> hold your peace, devil. Trying to tell me something. Shut your mouth. The best of them like a briar. The most upright is a thorn edge. Mm. And it wouldn't want to let no seller try to try to convince me what I'm doing wrong. Shut your mouth. Amen. Living contrary to God's word, meaning right. no position. That's right. Send the father a whole monger for a pastor. Mm. I don't let you tell me about I'm in some false. Said, I would say if I was you, I ought to go to hell. 
If I was in your church, I'd go to hell. You know your pastor having sex with a man, and you there? What did that say about you? Nobody cares. See the difference with y'all. The reason why we don't pack out one, I don't let everybody in here. Two, they ain't coming no how. People don't want to live right. Hold on. It's tight on a man. It's tight on a man and woman. You get looking at all that wrong and it's comfortable being wrong and you think you got love for these people. You don't realize when a person don't love God, you can't put a whole lot of confidence in them. I just come to grill with my family. I can't love you. You don't even love God. That's dangerous. I never realized how dangerous a person. You know what? A mother can turn her back on her son. I can if my mama wasn't in him, I could be on drugs, locked up, a uh, raper. You know what she'll say? That's my baby. That's my baby. Ain't, you don't never stop being mama baby. Come to prison, she'll steal, she'll, she'll come to court, get on and lie. Hand on stack of Bible and lie. Tell the judge I was a good boy. <laughs> it was them other children that I came around. She, mama, get up there and do that. I come tell mama, mama, I'll stop drinking and smoking, get in here and live right, gonna keep the Sabbath. Get out. Yeah. You're not even my child. Yeah. I don't know what kind of devil you are, but you some kind of devil at that coat. You said, let me get this straight now. Crack smoking, <laughs> raping, robbing, going to jail, your child, love me, ain't always gonna be your child. Not fornicating, not committing adultery, not lying and cheating, keeping the Sabbath, don't believe in women preacher. Get out your house. I don't know what kind of devil you done became. If that ain't scary, if that ain't scary, so let me get this straight. If I was on crack, you'd be my baby. That show you. Mama and them love is super fit. God show you. Man, you don't, I never learned what love was until I learned what the word said. Amen. That's Amen. scary how people mind it, what they'll say. Your own kids living right ain't cheating, working. I don't know. Don't lose my number. Don't even, me, me and your dad don't talk. We don't even want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> mom and dad, I hate you. I hope you die and go to hell. My mom and daddy would say something to me like that because I ain't smoking and drinking and shacking up and living out, hanging out in the street selling dope. Hate you. Don't even want to talk to you. Lose my number. You know how scared that is? These are the people that we put our hearts in. That show you. God word to show you. Mom and dad ain't right. That's scary. Mom and daddy, the people we love, it's some of, some of y'all dealing with family folk that's similar to this, ain't it? But ain't it amazing though you were doing wrong with no problem? Mm -hmm. no that's problem. scary. No problem doing wrong. But doing right? Oh, damn. <laughs> that's why I, I love God word. It teach me how to love people. Yeah. I love him. I know exactly where to put, put your behind. Right over him and put no confidence in him. Y'all hear me? They will love wrong folk for they love somebody right. So when he told you about he that does evil, they hate the light. That's why they hate you. You know what some of us do? You'll keep trying to force yourself on somebody that don't accept you. So now in order to be accepted, you got to become darkness. Now at the same time, you realize you handle your own growth. Because Paul you receive of us how you ought to walk. So you can please God. So you would abound. He said, for you know what commandments we gave you, and we gave them to you by the man that, that is light. He said, by the Lord, you're sure. Huh? A lot of the stuff we do, folks, is simply because y'all don't really sound to apply yourself to look at. Salvation has to be first. Let me tell you something. The reason why a lot of y'all, fifth chapter right quick. Fourth chapter, book of James. Four and one. I know I got first Epistle of John chapter three, Ephesians chapter five. At verse 1, 1st Epistle John, chapter 2, at verse 1. We got a lot of stuff out here. I just wish I could remember this stuff. This is the fourth chapter of the book of James, at verse 1. Listen. From whence come wars. That's what you want to know. From whence come wars. Come on, son. And fightings among you. Listen, and fightings among you. Tell us where it come from, James. Come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members. Y'all hear this? That's where a lot of stuff comes from. Your arguments, your disagreement, it comes because of stuff that's in your flesh. It's the stuff that you allow in, that resonates. That's why we have to break it up. When I come at people, people say, you offend. I offend business. People just have to take it. You know why? In order for me to save them, you have to be offended. In order for me to say, I got to offend you. That was offensive what Peter said. You don't tell a Jew they killed another Jew. That's retarded. Who are you talking to? But in order to save him, he had to convict him. Say, man, y'all became the murderers and the betrayer of that man. We, all our studying, 
all our knowledge to come tell us now it's been in vain that we sit here and we made a and we made a fault. There was an error. He had to he had to convict them. That's what I got to do with y'all. So I swing at you. I might tell you, I not not of your head is your stink. I might make it. I might say something about anything, but you got it. You got it. I'll be trying to prick you so you'll start looking at other things look like you'll get right. So I got got his radar. Need to just get right. That truth be told, I know y'all got junk going on. How y'all think y'all be doing slick? You got so much junk going to be ridiculous to him. I try to help y'all. Y'all just ain't got no mind to be saved. A lot of y'all, you just too young and dumb. You just don't know no better. It's going to take some time. A lot of y'all, when you get crippled down somewhere in a nursing home, you be like, he right. I bet ain't come to the nursing home to help you. This I'm going to be honest. Y'all up in why you had the book told y'all remember your creator. When you supposed to do that? Before what happened? They don't believe that though. Because your blood pressure good today, that's a good sign you ain't gonna never get high blood pressure. I used to go in there too. I used to set the mouth for blood pressure. I used to go in there and take the eye test. Listen, I put my hand, I called the, the letters up under. They said, What you read? I said, Oh, I'm reading the one under that. Oh, just blow their mind. They said, You good. I go in there, John, do that now right here, take that one out. This one right here won't focus. I said, P. I said, hold on. Is that a D? Is that an L? They said, you talk. At that point, I'm sweating. I said, oh, this is not. They said, what do you say? I said, nah. I said, what is it? <laughs> it barely goes from a P to a D to an L. You saying, I'm saying, is that an F? Is that what you said is? You said, this get real bad. But one time I walk in that place, man, I blow the charts off. I try to read the smaller one just to try to impress them. God let him so them days over, son. Evil days coming. Time comes that you don't have no pleasure. Hmm? You just jump on the spreadway walls, and that's a hard job. When you gotta run and catch that wall, and you pop it, you better pop it right, baby. So you gotta go over that wall. When you pop over that wall, you better hope to God ain't no track to wait on you. I go that wall now, I'm gonna need a ladder. I'm gonna need to crawl. I'm gonna go down and hold my hand and slide down the wall. I'm too done over to be laying. I land on that wall, I'm done. All you see is a little brown, two brown splatter. One gonna be me, the other one gonna be what I'm gonna let, what I'm gonna let out when I hit the ground. I can't do that stuff no more. Them day, listen, them evil day, a lot of y'all stuff y'all do. Them evil day come, you'll learn. Any folk, it's the stuff y'all, any stuff y'all usually could do when you were younger. Evil day come, don't it? Evil day come, you ain't gonna be able to do that long. Y'all hear me? It's evil because you look at, oh, I remember time. I know it. So this time hit the time. He says evil. That's evil for you, ain't it? Keep living. My hair used to be jet black too. Ooh, I had man, my line was so pretty like that man used to draw that thing on now. Look at it now. No matter now, I needed to draw it. I needed to draw the line and draw some on top too. Even they come, man. Look, I said, man, I never. I used to look at my old bald head nigga in the barber shop. There I am now. Even they come, you be saying, hold on for a second. You know, I don't think we got too many folks in here now. <laughs> no. But just be true. The time come get you, man. You be sitting around. One day you be a net thing. It looked like it was just yesterday. Everything when God come get you. Look, it was just like it wasn't long as I thought it was. One time I looked like I could do this a long time. When God come get you, you realize, man, your time cut short. Ain't you glad you're on this side? Amen. It takes different things to incur or to persuade us to come this way to hear it. When you sit down and consider God's word, a lot of y'all don't realize this is a good way for y'all to walk. Amen. This is a good way. A lot of y'all thinking you needed more experience. Experience might have killed you. That's right. I'm telling you, it ain't good for everybody. Sometimes Amen. I tell you all the time, we got enough folks in here with enough experience. And you see, these teenagers, y'all ain't got to go out there and try to say, I want to go do what they've done. You might come back in, you be so jacked up and messed up, you won't even get a chance to get that work. Man, you come in your mind spinning. If folks in your mind spinning so much when I'm preaching, they ain't even going to be saved. You know what I mean? They say, what did he say? Nothing. Because you get so much going on in your world before you know your world spiraling out of control, you can't stop it. At that point, you just got to say, you know what it is, what it is. Oh, it be people I know got to get up. Some of y'all got to get up and walk and leave him. Truth be told, some of them watching going to have to stop. You ain't going to be able to do it. Because you know what? Y'all haven't sat down and really, fast, really get down to a concept of realizing something. Whether I'm in him or out there, I'm going to die. That's a, that's a given. That's unavoidable. Whether I'm in here or out there, I'm going to die. The only thing I can change is where I go. So to take the step of I'd rather die out there doing what I want to do, then I got to remember there's another given. There's a necessary. There's a necessary called judgment. That's, that's it. It ain't hard. 
Listen, if I want to walk, ain't nothing wrong with me, baby boy. I can walk, drop this mic, I can hit that street. It's still a whole lot of things I can do. Oh, yeah. The only thing I got to deal with is the necessary. I got to see God. Huh? I got to see God. You know, the only person that'll sit around and don't believe that is a fool. He's a fool. If I walk out that door, don't you know I'd be a fool? I had to say in my heart, well, I watch people walk and go. You know what I say to myself? There you go, a real fool. Hey, you know what? Listen, if I could get the grasp the concept that there's no God, ain't nothing holding me back. Nothing. All I got to do, put in my mind, there is no God. I, if I had that concept, just a little bit of that, I wouldn't be him. What makes sense? If there's no God, there's no judgment, there's no wrong. It's basically morality. And that's going to be based on opinions. Right? Wouldn't make no sense to be him. But I thank God. I ain't got that mind today. Amen. I got the mind of son. It's a necessary. You know, you, I came here to escape death. That was the only reason why I came. I was afraid of death. I was afraid of death and life in prison. The only reason I came. It drew me. It got me here. I realized something. Now I began to love death. When I began to love God, I realized I can accept death. So I turned my mind and said, son, what you thought you came here for, you're not going to escape that. You got to die. I did. You know, the first thing was the fear of if you go to church and get God, then you can escape dying. Anybody else had a mind like that? I did. I thought if you go, then you won't have to worry about dying. You know, church people, they be good. They be about to die. Be like, they be good. Like they see something or whatever. They be seeing it go down the tunnel. It be a light. Come to the light, Carolyn. Email your name, Jerry. Come to the light, Carolyn. So you start accepting all this. It's just, man, this is the kind of stuff you accept. Then when you get here thinking that you're avoiding the inevitable, he tell you, I never told you that. You're not avoiding death. That's, that's inevitable. you got to die. But what you can do, you can avoid going to hell. Now you got choices. Do you believe he exists? Then if you believe he exists, what does the Lord require? What does it take in order for me? Sometimes you feel like people should say, you just got to believe that you believe. I did that. I came, I just believed. I did. Everybody start hollering, pastor, get in, just, if you get it high in there and everybody hallelujah, then you, you, you get it, you'll get it. You look at other folk, yeah, hallelujah, go away. You looking at folk trying to say, who got it? Or what, what you need to do? They, they, I, was, I was basing it on who else looked like they were saved. Maybe if I holler like they holler, raise my hand like them. Look at how they looking when they do it. Maybe if I do like that, I'll get it. Then you come back to the simplicity of he that believeth on me. As the scripture has said. And so you did a lot of hollering. <laughs> As you did a lot of hollering. You did a lot of looking and watching other people. He that believeth on me as the scripture has said. It really come to light to let me realize the giving for us of being saved is based upon what does the word describe? Where do you land? Where you anchor that in your obedience? And a lot of us in here, people put up stipulations. People got regulations on how far they're going to go with God. And it's going to be a hindrance. It's going to be a hindrance. When Yeshua had 84 disciples, it was simply because he had gotten to a point where, I mean, he was good with me when he was feeding people. He was good with me when he was doing something. But some stuff he did, it don't take all that. To me, it just don't take all that. You know what I'm saying? It's if people that's going to come, and as you all come, and as the word begin to continue to progress and grow, there are going to be other changes you got to make. Some of it might be some things that we do, like we started changing from the sisters when it's their time or brethren issues or whatever they sit on the outside. This is biblical. It ain't something we just made up. But not that different. I, don't, I ain't come for that. What's the purpose of Jesus? If you, the purpose of Jesus is see how well you're going to obey. That's right. The only reason why we do it because we're trying to get to him. That's right. The only reason you follow the law is to get to him. People think we're trying to come back and we're trying to we're trying to take, we don't take away from the law. In part, we establish it. We're putting it back. This, if we follow it and Paul said use it lawfully, it's good for it. That's how we find it. We go back through the law, we start reading things that was law given. We say, this is why he did this. So we see the importance of being obedient as with Abraham. That's how Abraham received the promise. 
Because he believed, he had to believe as he had already been told. For us, it became scripture, that which was recorded, that which was written down. It wasn't written down for Abraham. Abraham, what was, what was Abraham like walking around with it to knock? The book of Deuteronomy. Numbers. Exodus. What was he doing with it? But what God spake to him as with Adam, this solidified their salvation or their connection to God. Y'all got me? The only connection you got to God, just like we did with David, being Jews, is bloodline. Bloodline. You're either going to be bloodline or it's going to be by law, which means the law can tell how you can graft in. If you're not bloodline, then you got to be grafted in according to the law. All of the rituals, all of the rites are given to you when you do. When we sat down to do the, do the Lord's Supper, who can eat it? Huh? Everybody in the household? Exactly. A stranger couldn't eat it. Not one that just came through. He referred to others as strangers. He said that's so joined, that stayed there. Because they first came in, now he referred them as strangers. Then you know about grafting in. They weren't at first. But once they so joined, they stayed there. Now at this point, he said they can eat it. Because if you're willing to stay, then you want to keep, you can't stay here and we say we're keeping the Sabbath. You said, I'll catch up with y'all probably Sunday. We don't, me and the wife ain't go out, we finna go get some lunch. You're not finna stay here. So everybody that could be partaker of the blessings of anything that God was gonna do or the deliverance had to keep the same rites and ritual. You hear me? He said, you should have one man of law for you as well as for the who? The strangers. So they had to be, they were grafted in. Now, the period of time, you've been here so long and you've been doing it so long, folks, you're just like one of us. It'd be like even how we do things now. Prince will come to your house so long. And you said, why you keep asking? You've been here long enough. You know where it's at, don't you? So now this is what happened to a stranger. We've been coming and you've been doing it so long. And then, you know, after, after a while, the rites and rituals just naturally just given out to you. Y'all got me? This is what has to happen to us. Reco- for us, it begins to be a recovery. For a Jew, we talk about for a Gentile, it becomes the gain. To a Jew, it becomes the regain. When the Bible told he was the perpetuation for our sin. Which was the gain for a Gentile? The regain for a Jew. All these things we need to know. So when you look at why you begin to draw back or why you begin to kind of hide or withdraw yourself, it's because you hate the light. You hate the light because your deeds are evil. It's never, no, no, that's not my, what else reason is, if the book said that's what it is, what else could it be? There's another, there's not another explanation. People just don't want to deal with reality. People don't want to believe I come, I give, I do, and I'm still not right. Because it's more than just coming and doing. You can keep the law and not be right. These things have to become a law in your heart. Y'all got me? At that second chapter of the book of Romans, we called it earlier. Two and four. I'm going to try to get y'all out of here. It's because at eight o'clock, that snow supposed to be all over that ground. Go out, look at it. It's supposed, supposed to be eight inches. Why are you telling it? Listen, you know you dumb. When you're from Georgia, you go buy 15 buckets of snow, of salt. In Georgia, all they needed, one of them little boxes. And just, shh, shh, shh. We in Georgia, we got pl- snow plows, all stuff standing on standby. I mean, we got dump truck full of salt. Nigga, Ryan ain't going home. They're packed up. One fella said, man, this is how dumb it black man. This is just showing black people on the news. This is always dangerous. This dumb country bumping nigga sitting here in front of the uh, red box. Wind tape. He said, La- this is what happened. Last one, he wasn't prepared. This one, he going to be ready. Y'all know what happened last one of busted. He had, no, his electrician wall. So this year, he gonna get him some red box so he can go home. I said, boy, here goes nigga. <laughs> if your leg turns out, nigga, how you gonna wear red box? <laughs> what is wrong with y'all? <laughs> you written videos so if your power go out, you can watch. Well, it makes sense. They back when they come to serving God, they gonna be back when they come down that stuff too. Listen. Or despises thou the riches of his goodness. And forbearance and long suffering. Listen. Not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to, to repentance. Y'all hear what happened? That's what lead up to repentance. The goodness of God. That's right. The goodness of God might come through and work through some things that aggravate us, but it wind up working to our salvation. The goodness of God lead up to repentance. Just like with Balaam. Then that ass fell on his leg. That was the goodness of God. Should have led him to repentance. And you know what happened with him? He despised it. The Bible said he would rebuke. The prophet would rebuke for his madness. 
How many times God has put stuff in the way to stop us or try to withhold us from something, and yet we fought against it and went against it? You don't realize, it be for your soul's sake. I tell y'all stuff, I tell you, I was telling somebody. I, you know what I'm waiting on? For one, y'all to make me wrong when I tell y'all something. Y'all remember that? When I be telling them stuff, don't do something or whatever, it wind up, I be wrong. It always wind up happening. I be right. I say, when y'all gonna ever make me wrong? I tell y'all stuff, why you tell you this word work? And y'all don't realize a lot of things that might hurt you and might make you feel upset. It'll really work to your repentance you just sat down and obeyed it. Yeah, man, what you gonna lose? Mm. What you gonna lose at following God the right way versus how you feel or your emotion? Are you so determined and destined to try to prove and do and then want to shoot you in the foot later? That's dangerous. Y'all be just like Balaam. Listen. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treacherous up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath. Y'all hear this? You wanna you wind up treasuring up wrath against the day of wrath. Listen. And revelation of the righteous. And the revealing of the righteousness. Judgment of God. Listen. Who will render to every man according to his deeds. Y'all don't even consider. You see, he's talking about putting in your heart. He was talking about stirring this up in your heart. Now you see on the day of Pentecost why it was so important. When they heard it, they were pretty well. Had to get it out. If it didn't, what you think going to happen when God come back to render to every man his due? If that stuff in your heart. Listen. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and, immor- and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, mm. but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. To who, son? Of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Look at that. That's the blessing and the promise. He had to give it to you. That's how Moses gave it to you. What made sense? He just gave you the blessing and stopped, did he? He said, no. By patient, continuing, and well-doing, and seek for immortality. Then when I told you, wrath, contention, indignation, indignation, and obey not the truth. He said, upon every soul. God going to run to every man. Huh? In the book of Revelation, made sense. He told you, he that is righteous, do what? He that is filthy. He said, why well, do what? And my reward is with me to get it who? Every man. According to works shall be. So you go ahead and stand. When y'all be fighting against me when I tell y'all what to do, you don't be fighting against me. You be fighting God. Y'all don't even be real. Y'all be fighting God. What I care if you got to make a monkey fool out like yourself. That's your stupid self. God the one try to warn y'all, try to turn you. If you go to hell, ain't no skin off my back. God the one care for you. Y'all think it's me? That's you. I ain't going to hell. That's you. Let you go to hell. Let you make a fool out like yourself. Let you make a fool out like your family. God the one care about you. Y'all be too darn stupid to even see it. Why a man going to care about you? The Bible said, what no other man say the things of a man? The things of God know no man. Y'all sit around, y'all don't have no consideration. That's God just caring enough for you to try to turn you, trying to stop you. But y'all don't have no sin. You think you be fighting me, you be fighting just me. You be fighting God. I told you, he that hated you, hated me. He that hearing you, hearing me. He that despised you, despised me. And despised him that sent me. Where you going? Mm. Y'all do some dumb stuff. Come on down to the 19th, 20th, second verse of that, 20th verse of that same book. Listen. Thou that, is, thou that says a man should not commit adultery. Talk to me, son. Does thou commit adultery? Come on. Thou that abhors idols. What happened? Does thou commit sacrilege? Listen. Thou that makest thy boast of the law. In doing what? Through breaking the law. You hear what he's saying? Y'all going to make y'all boast by being a Jew. Jews strictly for keeping the law. He said, you break the law. Huh? The book told y'all you're supposed to revile it, the rule of your people. That's your law, too. Huh? The book told y'all the the people that said over you that whatever call they make, that you're supposed to consent to that. Holy God, see that Deuteronomy 17 chapter. Y'all must need to hear this. Deuteronomy chapter, so he said the judge they're going to be in that day, whatever they call, you're supposed to go along with it now. Y'all make y'all boast about the law, keeping the Sabbath. That's the law. Your dietary, what we call it? Law. Law. He said it's all breaking the law. Y'all are lawbreakers. Y'all ain't no law keepers. 17 chapter book of Deuteronomy. Let me hear what verse 9 say. Listen. And thou shalt come unto the priest, the that Levite. Look how God put me right now. I ain't even want this. Thou shalt do what now? Come unto the priest, the Levites. What happened, son? And unto the judge. When? That shall be in those days. What? In these days. He ain't told he just said the priest. You said, well, he was talking about those that were then. He said that shall be in those days. And what part of happened, son? And inquire. And do what? Inquire. I've been told on it. This book, ain't it? 
Huh? They're bug ain't it? They be thinking, how to think everybody pulled the cunt him? Because you're a nigga. Y'all sitting around, y'all break the law. You told you probably to go and inquire. Of the who? Who ain't put in inquire of the who? And thou shalt come unto the priest. And who else, son? Uh huh. And unto the judge that shall be in those days and inquire. Come on, son. And they shall shew thee the, the sentence of judgment. What happened, son? And thou shalt do according. And to thou shalt, you, then you go do what you want to do as they tell you. And thou shalt do according to the sentence. I heard what Pastor said, I'm going to do something different. That's why you're going to go to hell. That man's you're supposed to come to the priest. The Levite, the judge, they're going to be in those days, and you shall inquire. And you're supposed to do after the sinner that they give you. When you sure heal the ten lepers, one came back to him. You remember what he told him to do? Show to the go show thyself unto the what, what? And offer that which is according to the what? Oh. Whatever he tell you. Whatever he tell you. He would have never told you, but I say. He would have never told you that. That didn't go along with the law. See, a lot of people think that man just went around breaking the law. He never broke the law. He established the law. He could have either told him, but he could have done that because he was not a priest. That would have made no sense. He would have came along and he would have did it. Paul said, if I build again no thing which I tear down, I will make myself a transgressor. These people don't know what they be doing. They be thinking they're going to tie this man up. They ain't tied this man up on absolutely nothing. I didn't much as they think they're going to tie me up, but I don't even know nothing. Come on back to what you had, son. At the second oh. chapter of the book of Romans. What we love about verse 23? Amen. Let them get it. Romans 2 and 23. I know we still got Ephesians 5 and 1 and 1 Epistle John 3 and 1. We might let y'all go because that's snow. I know it's out there in the blankets they play. Probably all on the roof. We to get a snow shovel to go out there and get it out the ceiling. Come on. Thou that makest thy boast of the law. Thou, thou that makest thy boast of the law. Through breaking the law. How many of y'all, how many y'all break the Sabbath? How many of y'all break the dietary law? So how many of y'all disobey what I tell you? Don't even raise your hand. Get too much. So, see, so you make your boast of the law. He said, doing, you sit around, you break the law. Come on, son. Dishonorest thou God. And you dishonorest God. Come on. For the name of God. Is what? Blaspheme. Who? Among the Gentiles. Why? For what reason? Through you. That when folk be running God down, they know y'all play a part of that. He said, that's why folk be running me down. Y'all hypocrite with your family, hypocrite with your job worker, and your neighbor. You know they be running God down. Y'all be actually think these folk will be talking. They get y'all to take your scarves off, get y'all to roll your skirts up, get y'all to sit up and do stuff you know you ain't supposed to do. You do know they be running God down after that, right? When they run down the way of y'all, son of God, you do know they talking about him. The way of y'all, that's God's name. The book teaches the song 18 and 30, brethren. Ask for, Ask for who? God. Ask for God. His way is perfect. But you're a hypocrite. He said, my name being blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Come on. As it is written. What happened, son? For circumcision verily profited. You hear that? He said, circumcision does profit it. If thou keep the law. That's the whole difference. That's why Abraham's circumcision was profitable. Because he obeyed and kept. Unlike you. Your circumcision is no good. Listen. But if thou be a breaker of the law. Uh oh, but if you be a breaker of the law, tell him what happened, son. Thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. You just went and put the cap back on your little baseball bat. As, as Jews, as male, we had the foreskin removed. As spiritual Jews, there's supposed to be a foreskin removed from the heart. Amen. There's a covering that comes on the heart that's supposed to be done away once you obtain the spirit. After the hearing and the unveiling of the law, there should be a circumcision of the heart. Now he just said your uncircumcision, your circumcision just became uncircumcision. Listen. Therefore, if the uncircumcision. Now he said, now, therefore, now if the uncircumcised, which is a Gentile. If they do what, Andre? Keep the righteousness of the law. You hear this? If they keep the right of the law, what happens, son? Shall not his uncircumcision be counted for what? Circumcision. Listen. And shall not uncircumcision. Which is what? By nature. See, that, that's by nature. A man born with that. You're like a man born being a sinner. He says by nature. A man, every man born uncircumcised. He said that's nature. Well, divine nature comes on and says every man is born uncircumcised spiritually. That's why Yeshua told you you had to be, what was it? Born again. Amen. 
That's when you take on the circumcision of the heart, being born again. Y'all got it? Listen. If it fulfilled the law. Now, if it fulfilled the law. Judge thee. He said, now you judge. What? Who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. He said, now you judge it. He said, judge it by the law. Judge it by the law. Who wound up transgressing the law? The person that was circumcised that broke the law or the person that won uncircumcised, the person that was uncircumcised that kept the righteousness of the law. He said, you judge it by the letter, which meant go back and look at the law. Because when Israel came out from Egypt, none of them were circumcised. Because they kept the righteousness of the law. Abraham, when he got it, he was an uncircumcised. That's the fourth chapter of the book of Romans. Let me prove this thing out. These folks don't know they be doing this book. Why did you think he taught you concerning Joshua in the sixth chapter how he circumcised them? When they came out of Egypt, they weren't circumcised. He was showing you they kept the righteousness of the law. They heard the word. He said that was by nature, but if you keep the righteousness of the law, he said you judging yourself by the letter. Go back and look. This ain't my opinion. Look at the fourth chapter of the book of Romans at verse 1. Listen. What shall we say then? What am I going to say? Tell them about Abraham, son. That Abraham our father. Tell as, us about it. As pertaining to the flesh. See, this found. as pertaining to the flesh had found. He's going to tell you about the flesh because there's something else that pertains to the flesh you need to know. Listen. For if Abraham were justified by works. See this? If he were justified by works. He hath whereof to glory. He would have nothing to glory. Listen. But not before God. Listen. For what said the scripture? What did the scripture say? Abraham believed God. Hey, this is why it's important for you to know this. Abraham did what? Believed God. Abraham was circumcised. Abraham believed God. And tell him what was accounted to him for, son. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. These are the children of Abraham. Listen why. Now to him that worketh. Now to him that worketh. Is the reward not reckoned of grace. How many, how many of y'all work a job, have an employer? How many of y'all employ you pay people that don't work? Exactly. Wouldn't make sense, would it? They're going to pay people that's going to be on the payroll. They're going to pay people that's going to be employees, right? Well, he said that's how the reward is reckoned, right? He said you pay people who did work. Listen. But of debt. But of debt. Because you owe it to them. Listen. But to him that worketh not. But him that worketh not. But believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. Listen, son. His faith is counted for righteousness. Listen by Abraham. Even as David also described it, the blessedness of the man. What did David tell him, son, about blessed is the man? Unto whom God imputeth righteousness without work. You hear what he said? He said blessed. David already prophesied. He said blessed is the man whom the Lord will account righteous to him without work. That's what we wind up getting. Did you get on the cross and die? But you believe. That's what he told you in St. John 7, 38. He that believeth on me as the scripture had. Because you didn't do the word, did you? Out of here, belly shall flow. David already said you were blessed. Man, these folks don't know what they're doing with this book. David already blessed is the man to whom the Lord would not impute sin. That's what David actually told you. Because he didn't impute sin. He didn't account sin to you. That made you righteous. David said, man, is blessed. The ways of sin, what was it again? You committed sin. Why you ain't going to hell? What work did you do to keep you from going to hell? Blessed is the man whom the Lord will not impute sin. That's what he told you about Abraham. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven. And what else, son? And whose sins are covered. Listen what happened. Blessed is the man. That's why you had to be baptized. You had to be submerged in the water. Listen. Blessed is the man. Yeah. To whom the Lord will not impute sin. Listen. Come with this blessedness then upon the circumcision only. Wow. He said, if blessed come on the circumcision only, that would be us, the Jews. Listen. Or upon the uncircumcision Not also. Uncircumcision. Listen why. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham. It was account to Abraham for what reason, son? For righteousness. For righteousness. Listen. How was it then reckoned? Listen, he wanna ask you a question. So how was it accounted to Abraham? Tell him what position was Abraham in, son. When he was in circumcision? Was it when he was circumcised? Or in uncircumcision. Or was it when he was uncircumcised? What happened, son? Not in circumcision. Abraham was not circumcised. But what was it, son? But in uncircumcision. He was uncircumcised. So Abraham was already counted righteous before he even got circumcision. 
Your sorrow behind had to get circumcised before you start counting yourself righteous. So you had to start doing the work before you get the reward. Circumcision was a token. Do you not remember I told you guys before, you still are obligated, you have to act and perform and show the same duties, just like a stranger would if they came in with Israel. Before they would be grafted in, they had to show the same works. It wouldn't be, oh, we're going to graft you in, then you're going to start keeping the Sabbath like people do. Baptized people, then they keep the Sabbath. Baptized people, then they start eating pork. You had to start eating pork and keep the Sabbath before you get baptized. Abraham was already obeying. It made no sense that I'm going to give you circumcision so you'll start keeping the Sabbath. So you'll stop transgressing and commit adultery. Amen. Abraham was already keeping it. Amen. It was given to him as a token. Amen. These people don't know what they be doing. They think they read the law. They're telling you they ain't got to do nothing. This is where Christians read and they get twisted. The Bible saying you ain't got to do no work. Abraham didn't have to be, he was given circumcision because of his belief. Abraham just said, I believe, I believe. Lord, I believe. Abraham acted upon. Amen. Abraham shooed. Abraham became the father of faith. Faith is the substance of things. What was it? Oh, Evidence of things. So what Abraham believed, he hadn't actually seen it manifest. But then he walked upon what God commanded him to do. That's how the manifestation comes in. Y'all got me? So don't go be stupid saying you just said and believe you don't have to do nothing. That's retarded. You didn't have to die on the cross. Here I'm told, blessed the man whom the Lord will not impute sin. And God accounted the righteousness to him. Abraham came along. We learned this from Abraham. Listen to what he told you about circumcision. So it ain't my mouth. Listen. And he received the sign of circumcision. Wow. See this? Circumcision did not save Abraham. He received the sign of circumcision. Tell him why, Brandon. A seal of the righteousness of faith. Wow. It was a seal to the righteousness of faith. Circumcision did not save him. Abraham already acted upon and walked in without circumcision. It was a token. That's how we can graft in a Gentile. It wasn't hard bringing Cornelius in. He came up being the seed of Abraham. Because Abraham received it before he was circumcised. When he was given the promise, God gave him circumcision as a seal. He gave him that as a sign. Abraham was already walking upright. Abraham didn't get no circumcision so he can obey. You see what I told you how you already have to be acting and doing and performing before you receive? That's how he received the promise. So those of you that look at when I get the spirit, I'm going to start obeying. You are an idiot. You're never going to get it because you're not walking in obedience. Abraham was walking in obedience. Mm. Let's start telling you about faith. He already believed God. Abraham was already obeying God. It only made sense to give him the promise. That's why he told you, pick me up at Galatians 3 and 16. Listen. Galatians 3 and 16. Three readers. They're going to be slow. Galatians 3 and 16. Listen. Lord, now to Abraham. Yeah, Galilee, the one with the G. Go ahead. Now to Abraham. And to his what? C. Was the who? Where the promise It's going to make sense. Two righteous men. Abraham was blameless and so were the son. So what do you got to do in order for you to get the spirit? You got to become blameless. You have to become blameless. The only way to become blameless is to learn what's being asked, what's required of you, then you got to walk according to the mandate. What you guys are going to do, what you've been doing, which is do absolutely nothing. Come in, day, sleep, um, um, wander all, change, exchange planets, look for excuses, and you're still in your same damnable state. What's something you're going to do? I have four count. First thing I hear, I say, 5% of y'all are going to mess around and they're not going to be saved. You know what they want to know? I'm kind of thinking about giving up. You say but 5% of us are going to be saved. First thing should trigger in your mind, I'm going to be in the 5%. This is the mind of a nigga. I mean, if ain't but 5% are going to be saved, I mean, kind of think about it. Is it going to make sense? Maybe I ain't going to get in now. I guarantee you I'm striving to be in now. Now I'm getting cut down to one. I'm looking to be in now. Amen. Huh? I'm, Y'all can't look at the mind always trying to find a reason to stop or get out of something. Why are you trying to get in it? Amen. 
That's the mindset. We already know what we've been. The Lord have told you, though the children of Israel be in the sand of the sea, yes, shall or what? What did it look like every one of y'all going to be saved? So guess what you got to do? You got to push and take somebody else's spot. I'll take somebody else's spot. I said, man, I don't like Jacob. Ain't but a few going to get it. I'm just going to have to put me on something that look like somebody going to get it. I'm going to put on the smell and everything. I'm going to get that blessing. You ain't going to get it, but I'm going to get it. Y'all already pulled nigga five. All right, I'm, that's it. You ain't talking about me. Eh? Well, I'm going to do I might as well stop. Man, that ain't even my mindset. Amen. Huh? If God's ain't but two of y'all going to be saying, I'm one of them. Everybody going to have to fight for the other one. Everybody need to be fighting. Say, everybody need to be saying, I'm one. He said, he said, I ain't but two. We fight. We're going to make ourselves in one man. So here we go, both of us. What are we going to do? You got to connect yourself to the body. The promise was only to one man. Now to Abraham and to his. I guess I just taught that ring one day. What the promise is made. To Abraham and to his seed. S E E D was the promises, plural. Made. He said not. And to seed. As of what? Many. But unto who? But as of one. And to who? And to thy seed. That S E E D. Which is Christ. The Messiah. Now, if it's only to him, and that's the only person he was talking to, Abraham and him, well, you might well just give up and quit. Is your name Mashiach? You sure? So I ain't talking to you. What you even here for? Because now what we got to do, we got to be baptized in him. Only way to get it, we got to be in him. That's the only way we're going to do it. We have to be in him. This is what he told us at the fifth, first epistle of John chapter 5, verse 19. Let's see what he said. How y'all think we're going to do this? We got to be in him. Alright. Hold brother, give me 2 Corinthians chapter 5 right quick. My verse 17. Let's see. What... I'm going to just see what the book said. Because y'all pay attention to what Galatians just told you. Then you got to become smarter than what y'all. That's like Jacob. Now if I know the promise is only going to be given inheritance to the elder son. Now I got to some kind of way get myself in him. That's what, that, that was the law. Why y'all think Jacob just put on Esau? He just want to be like Esau? Everything in inheritance went to the elder son. Okay. I didn't want to hear him just do like some of y'all. Well, I ain't the elder son. I might as well just quit. Ain't used to me trying. I'm finna bump somebody out. I'm finna get in. One way I got to One way I'm getting in. Listen to the book. And we know that we are of God. And listen what the whole world do. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. Listen what else he told you. And we know that the Son of God has come. And did what, son? Hath given us an understanding. Tell him why. That we may know him that is true. That we may do what? Know him that is true. Who we gonna know? That we may know him that is true. Tell him where we at, son. And we are in him that is true. You didn't understand why he told you that. Because to Abraham and to his seed, there's two people, was the promises made. He said not unto S-E-E-D-S as a many. So he was never talking to you. He was talking about one. He was talking about his seed. He was talking about the Mashiach. So when John wrote, he told you that we know that the Son of God have come. And what has he given us, son? An understanding. He given, that's, why, that's why I know this. You know why you don't know it? Because he told you he was going to give you past according to his heart. Guess what they were supposed to do? They were supposed to shepherd you with what? And what is you supposed to have? Why did he tell you that we're in him that is true? Why did he just say we were like him? Because the promise was only to him. He's the inheritor. Amen. Y'all waste a lot of time. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. He kept reading, he'll tell you this was the true God. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Listen to the book. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. If any man be around what? If any man be in Christ. If any man be like. If any man be in Christ. Tell him what he is, son. He is a new creature. 
Tell them what happened. Old things are passed away. And tell them what happened, son. Behold, all things are become new. And what happened with these things? And all things are of God. So in order to get in him is true, we had to do and emulate, mark, mimic what he did. The man sat down and gave us a supper. And often as you eat this, what was it? Eat this bread. You do show my death and suffering till I come. He had to take this cup. It was his blood. We had to become one with him. That's the only way to get it. That's the only way for us to get in. This man set up every option, every avenue. He even set himself up a bride. 19th chapter of the book of Revelation. This man has set up every plan of attack to get us in. We're just the dumbest, stupidest people you've ever seen. I mean, we are some dumb people. Revelation 19 and 1. Listen. And after these things, what happened, son? I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, "What did they say?" Hallelujah. Which we don't change that one, brother Kim in the new Bible that we're printing. Put Hallelujah. Hallelujah is Greek. I don't care for Greek salad. I don't want no Greek yogurt or nothing else they got. Listen, salvation and glory. Hallelujah means praise ye Yah. Hallelujah is the Greek translation. I don't care for nothing these people got. Listen, and honor. And power unto the Lord our God. Listen. For true and righteous are his judgments. Listen. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication. Yeah. And hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Listen. And again they said, Hallelujah. Uh huh. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. Come on. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God and sat on the throne, saying, Amen. Hallelujah. They said, So be it. Praise ye, Yah. Come on. And a voice came out of the throne saying, What did it say? Praise our God. Why? All ye his servants. Yeah. And ye that fear him, both small and great. Yeah. And I heard as it were the voice of great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah. Yeah. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Come on. Let us be glad and rejoice. Why? And give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. Tell him what happened, son. And his wife had made herself ready. You didn't even know why he did it, did you? Because of Adam. Adam said, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And he said, it was no more too. Ain't nothing but a God can put that up. That's the only way you're going to get the promise. At 1 Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3, give me about verse 6. Now I can open this book up with these folks. These folks don't know what they're doing with this book. They have no reason understanding why he had to marry us. Because if the promise is only to him, how did you come up with it? It don't make sense. Galatia would be a liar. Paul wasn't a liar. Paul told you himself in the ninth chapter of the book of Romans, I speak the truth in the Mashiach, I lie not. He said, my conscience also bad me witness in the Ruach HaKadosh. How do y'all actually think you were getting in? And guess why he ain't going to just take you? Because the law came and told him, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That's right. All right. These people have no idea what they say. Y'all have no idea how the law set up. Why he going to marry you? First of all, you were already taught by the law. You're a Canaanite. The book of Ezekiel told your mama was a Hittite. The dad was a Canaanite. Why would he marry you? Our law was strict for that. He wants to to marry nobody, serve or follow the God, so he, the law restricts him from even marrying you while you're in that condition. Mm. Why y'all think the law told you that you actually thought it was about them, it was about him? He should be called a Nazarene, which means, you know what he was going to be doing? He would be quick to love a strange woman. The law kept him from doing it. All right. What you going to do? He should be, Samson was a Nazarene. He loved a Philistine. Hey, people, y'all don't just stop it. Just stop it. Don't try to be safe. Go do something. Go duck walk. Y'all do something else. Y'all ain't got no common sense about this thing. Do y'all not know this man has set this up for us to be saved? And you don't even know how. If it was only to him that he had to set a way up that you can inherit it. This is 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 6. I don't even know what they're talking about. Listen. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. Calling him what? Lord. Tell him what I sign. Whose daughters ye are. As long as what? As ye do well 
and are not afraid with any amazement. This ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Listen to this. Likewise, ye husbands. Likewise, ye, ye husbands. Listen. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Oh, according to information. Tell them why. Giving honor unto the wife. As unto the what? Weaker vessel. For what reason? And as being heirs together. As being what? Heirs together. In the what, son? Of the grace of life. So if he took up for his bride, what would that make us? That make us heirs to the kingdom. These people don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing in this book. I'm telling you, they need to pass a law to gun these preachers down. Gun them all down. They actually don't know what this book is even talking about. It was never to you. There's no way you're going to find it. But he just told you to Abraham and to his seed was the promises made. He was never talking to you. Revelation 19, 1, just talking about getting married. No, at the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians. I call five and one, but jump down, son, give me verse 26. Make it 25. Let's see what happens. Y'all all right tonight? Amen. I get y'all out. Y'all know that snow piled up bad out there now. That good, these dumb jaws be closing down. They're going to try to go back later. Oh, we trying. Too late now. You should have a post we close. That's your stupidity. Spend all that money. They bought that junk for the Olympic. Man, we're going to be able to dig it well for months. We're going to be so accurate, you inaccurate niggas. Never got nothing right. God predict. God right, determines. Man. This is Ephesians 5.25. Listen to this, son. Husbands. Who? Husbands. Who? Come on, son. Husbands. Husbands. Love your wife. This is what he told you. Even as Christ also loved the congregation. And did what? Gave himself for it. And that he might do what? Sanctify. And do what? Cleanse it. With the washing of what? Water by, by the, the word. What? Listen. That he might present it to himself. A glorious. Congregation. Not having what? Spot or wrinkle. Or any? Such thing. But that it should do what? That it should be Kodesh. That it should be Kodesh. Listen. And without blemish. Listen what he told you. So ought men to love their so wives. So ought, meaning what, brethren? You expected to love your wives. Listen how? As their own bodies. Because Adam said that two should be one. Listen what he told you. He that loveth his wife. Loveth who? Himself. Listen. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh. See, no man yet hated his own flesh. But what does he do to it? But nourishes. And do what else? Cherishes. Even it. as who? The Lord the congregation. Even as the Lord doth the congregation. This is what he told you. But we are members of his body. We are members of his body. Of his flesh. That makes sense, don't it? Talking about us being one flesh. We are members of his body and of his flesh. Listen. And of his bone. And of his bone. But Adam said, this is now bone of my bone, didn't he? Amen. Flesh of my flesh. That's why when they pierced it, he told you, he was on the, on the um, cross, he told you, I can see all my bones. He was looking at the people there. I can see all my bones. Listen what he told you. For this cause. For this cause. Shall a man leave his father and mother. And cleave to his wife. And shall be joined into his wife. And you know what folks do? They'll leave out behind their wife. They'll say, the Bible use an idiot. You're an idiot. Listen. And they too shall be one flesh. Listen what he told you. This is a great mystery. This is a great hidden truth. A mystery is a hidden truth now. Tell them who he was talking about the whole time, Brandon. But I speak concerning Christ. And who else, son? The congregation. He was never even talking about you. I told you, her, my love, your wife, you were just a little similar to He was telling you, follow my pattern. Huh? Peter tried to tell you something you just too dumb to miss. It. He told you, dwell with your wives according to knowledge. That's why you sure knew they couldn't take. He said, so that his prayer wouldn't be hindered. You didn't actually think he was talking about you, did he? Nobody hear your prayer, nigga. Your prayer don't get past your lips. Your nose smell it and blow it back to the ground. It was all about him. He knew how to dwell with us, otherwise his prayer would have been hindered. He got so mad up one time, he told them, fellas, said, he don't have a sword, so sell him sell that garment and get two. You know what he told Peter? Them? He had two. He said, that's enough. I got to dwell with you according to knowledge, so my prayers don't be hindered. Hmm? Even when he came to the garden, he came in the cool of the day. I got to know how to deal with you so my prayers don't be hindered. See, when Paul started telling us in the fifth chapter, he broke it down to let you know. We now bone of his bone. That's what Adam told you about her. Amen. She, he was looking at her. We told you I can see all my bone. How can he look inside and won't see all his bone when he's sitting here nailed to a cross? I'm looking at it. I can see all my bones. 
Then Paul just came along and just told you we now flesh and, flesh, flesh and bone in his bone. We became inheritors of that mountain through him, through that marriage. Then he lets you know, this is a great mystery, isn't it? Not to us. He said, a hidden truth. He said, but I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about the Mashiach and the congregation. Listen to what he told you. Now he's talking to you. Never the what? Nevertheless. Nevertheless, this is what he told you. Let every one of you in particular do what? So love his wife. Yeah. Even, even as himself. Now he's talking to you. Now he told you what you're supposed to do. Nevertheless, let every one of y'all love your wife just like you do your own body. Now get that woman. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. And call him reverence. She's supposed to get a highest honor to her husband. That's what Sarah told you about being Sarah. She called him Lord. That's a high honor. She obeyed him and called him Lord. This is where y'all mess up. You'll call you. That what you want me to do? Call you Lord? I call you Lord. You miss. She obeyed him and called him Lord. And you're obedient. That's what we do with him. He don't want you to sit around and call him no Lord. And say, and Luke 6, 44. I get y'all out of him. This thing. No, it ain't right, though. Man, it word right. I be up a cup and body blowing y'all behind <laughs> Sit down, they're going to go corner down and call somebody, Lord, shut your mouth. This is Luke chapter 6. Luke is what, brother? He's a physician. Who, who need a physician? Why are we getting a physician? We see. This is Luke chapter 6 and verse 44. Listen. For every tree is known by his own fruit. Listen. For of thorns men do not gather figs. What else, son? Nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. Listen. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart. Bring Back to that heart again. That's where the seed got to go. A good seed got to fall in good ground. So we deal with the heart. That's the ground. Listen. Bring it forth that which is good. Listen. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bring it forth that which is evil. That's why y'all, those of y'all that's in still commit sin, your heart ain't right. Listen what he told you. For of the abundance of the heart. What happened? His mouth speaketh. Listen. And why call ye me, and why call ye me, Lord, Lord? Be wise. Don't go home and start calling your husband, Lord. I'm going to start calling you Lord. And why call you me Lord, Lord? And what else he told him, son? And do not the things which I say. Shot that in the foot, didn't it? So when Abraham, when Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Abraham, she, Sarah was just running, whatever, Lord. Whatever, Lord. No, she obeyed Abraham and called him Lord. This is where you sister fall short. You will never take on the title of being Sarah's daughter. And the sad part about that, that's embarrassing. It should be embarrassing to you. Because the book said it. Didn't they say it? That would be embarrassing me to be told I will never be no son of God. One of the sons of God simply because I don't obey. All I have to do is start obeying. That's good, brother. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.